Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I'm going to kind of get you brought up to speed on our 10 double E restoration project. This is a Monarch 10 double E uh, tool room lathe, highly precision lathe, and uh, it's been a long term, ongoing kind of back burner uh, project in my shop for a while now. And uh, we did get some work done to it over uh, the last couple of weeks, and I kind of wanted to share a little bit with you about it now. The work that was done to it really did not get on video, and the reason is, and I'm going to give a little bit of story here, um, uh, back, it's been several months ago now, we had a work day out here at the shop, had a bunch of people came in that was helping me out, and one of the things that we had to work on was getting this machine completely stripped down of all the paint, and uh, we had a couple of guys, Don Hasselbach actually stayed over an extra day with me during that work uh, weekend that we did. And he started doing some of the body work on this. When I say body work, coming here with a body filler, Mondo type stuff. And, um, you know, kind of smoothing up the castings. He got one set, one layer of Mondo on everything, got it sanded down, then he left. And then, quite honestly, the machine has just kind of been sitting now for again, a couple of months. Um, last weekend, from when I'm filming this, probably not from when it gets aired, but I had, again, Keith Hubbard came up from Jacksonville, Florida. Another one of the guys that kind of helped out in some of those work days. He came up and helped me out do a couple of things around the shop. And again, he kind of got over here and went in attack mode on this thing. And what he did is he kind of finished doing the body work on it. So put a couple more layers of Bondo, sanding, priming, uh, find the areas that need a little bit more work. You know, Don kind of did the bulk of it, but anytime you're doing that body work, it's just like it takes multiple iterations. You know, it kind of gets to be a smaller and smaller job every time, but you find some areas that need a little bit more work here. So uh, Keith Hubbard did a lot of that. Uh, we got primed and we actually got a coat of paint on it. And this is a uh, Rust-Oleum uh, Dark Machine Gray is the color of this. It's the same color that I painted my Thompson grinder. Uh, I know a lot of people cringe when I say this, but we spray paint this rattle pins. Uh, I don't really, I'm not a, I'm not a paint guy, I'm not a body guy, that is not what I enjoy doing. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really set up to spray stuff in here, and uh, so we just use rattle pins. And it's, it, it looks good. I mean, is it perfect? No. Uh, but it, it looks good and I'm happy with the results. Uh, kind of went in and started putting some of the, uh, we've taken all the knobs off and we've cleaned those up and painted those and kind of got them on here. Actually got some of the tags put back on and I uh, just kind of want to give you guys an update of where we are. Uh, once I kind of, I got a few more things and we're going to be working on some of that today, but uh, here very shortly what I want to do is actually get this machine back over and get our electronics hooked back up to it because one of the, really the big job on this lathe has been putting in the new DC drives and stuff to get the retrofit all the electronics to run the DC motor that powers it. So it's kind of an oddball uh, setup. It's not something you can just go throw a VFD on without changing the motor out some other things. And it's not something you can just go buy an off the shelf uh, DC drive and put it here and run. It, it, it's a complicated system. And we've talked about some of that in previous videos. And I'm probably about 90% done with the electrical stuff. We got a little, few little tweaking and fine tunings to do, but I got to get it all hooked back up because when we started doing the body work, I disconnected all the electronics so that we could do this. And so now that has been sitting on back burner until we can get over here. All right, so I think that kind of catches you up to where we are. Uh, let's get here. I got a few little things I want to kind of show you guys uh, what we're working on here. So one thing I'll point out are kind of the, the tags that are on here, the little Main plates and stuff. These are mostly cast aluminum, I believe, is what they were originally. And uh, I was able to get this plate off, these two little tags here off, uh, without any damage or whatever. This tag down here, when I pulled it off, we we basically messed it up. It it just the little drive screws wouldn't come out, and by the time I got it off, it was all messed up. So I actually, this is a replacement. This is one that my friend Tom Utley, who makes restoration machine packs, uh, he actually, I sent him this original one and he sent me back a brand spanking new uh, replica of that tag and we've got that one on there. And it came out looking at um, Tom actually is doing this. He uses a, uh, a 
laser basically to do this. He pick, he'll do the artwork and then use a laser to go in there and actually etch this stuff out and he'll powder coat the back side of it and, and polish off the front teeth and the letters. The other tags were in good shape, so basically what I did on those is I just uh, took some black spray paint. I spray painted them and then we kind of just lightly sanded the areas that were up. That took the paint off so you can kind of see uh, what's on there. So these are all pretty much done. Uh, and again, real happy with how these turned out. And I said, this tag was brand new. And I got another tag that Tom did. We'll show you that. I actually got to install that. I'm going to show that process. Another thing I need to do on this uh, to really kind of get it restored is I'm going to take these side glasses off. I got this one off already. And uh, we're going to restore these. These are basically uh, side glasses to see the oil level in different parts of the machine. There are five of these side glasses. On there. There's four on the headstock, three up top, one down bottom. There's also another side glass in the saddle. And all of these are really kind of, you can't even hardly read them anymore. And we've got plastic that's been scratched up and stuff on the outside. So uh, I'm going to take these apart and we're actually going to totally restore these and give them back. Uh, this particular style of side glass, pretty sure they were made by Bajour who's still in business and still makes all kinds of stuff for oil lubrication systems, and they still make sight glasses. But I have not been able to find this particular style that you can order, uh, but we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of go through the process of restoring these and show you how we can bring them back to life. So we're gonna come in here, and I think we're just gonna take this one off. There are three little screws that hold that in place. Uh, this is kind of a, a balloon ring uh, that goes on there and then there is this little plastic glass in the middle. So uh, let's get this out and we'll kind of show you how this all goes together. We've got screws out and we've got to break this thing loose and there is a gasket behind it that kind of holds it in place and that gasket is just kind of stuck in there. I'm just going to take a little punch here. And we're going to kind of knock it back and forth a little bit. Back, so now we should be able to kind of get that out of here. There we go. Just need to get something, get a little leverage on it. It's got a little plastic piece that kind of presses out. Of course, I'll throw it on the floor. This little window, the it's all scratched up and got stuff on the outside. There's this is just some gunk on the back. I can take a rag and kind of clean that off. And normally you can re recycle these, reuse them, but because the fronts are so messed up on these, I'm actually going to replace these. And uh, I got on the internet and did some searching, and there was actually a gentleman over on Practical Machinist that had kind of gone down this path before. And he found some sight glasses that he was able to order. They're not exactly uh, just drop in replacements, but with, with a little bit of a modification, he was able to make them work. I've got some of those new glasses ordered, and uh, we're going to try that. I don't have them in the shop yet, uh, but we're going to try that. The other thing we've got in here is uh, kind of back behind it, there's this little bullseye target looking thing that has the level in there. Uh, that should be white with a, a line across here that shows the oil level. Uh, the problem is, is that that is just totally stained and everything else. And uh, so I'm actually going to replace that background back there. And uh, again, Tom Utley, the guy that makes my tags, he is going to uh, make some little plates to go in here and replace these. So I need to get that out of there. You know, I'm not too worried if I mess up because we're going to be replacing it. Uh, it's just kind of in there and being in there for 60, 75 years, however long it's been. that cork the acid material out in there. So that's just a little disc of metal that has that background in it. We're going to replace 
the little sides uh, for the defect good. Uh, you get the other glasses off, and uh, I'm not going to be able to kind of finish these until I get my new glasses and, and the sights on the background. I don't have those yet, but we'll be doing that on the road here for long. So I thought I'd show the process here of cleaning up one of these plates. Uh, this is actually the where the start stop button goes. And uh, it's got the etched out back here and you got the raised area. And basically what I did is again, I just sprayed this with some spray paint to get the black in there. I've got some sandpaper here, actually over here on a uh, little beater surface plate that I use for lapping sometimes. And we're just gonna kind of sand the high spots down on that until it starts cleaning up everywhere. So you can kind of see it working right there. We'll just uh, work our way around until we clean up all those areas. It will have that nice contrast between the metal and the background. So let me work on that and we'll get this one done. Well, there we go. Got that knocked out. That looks great. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that reinstalled back on the machine. Well, there we go. That looks good. Uh, again, I will be ordering some of the correct hardware screws to go in there, but that will tide us over for right now until uh, that can come in. One more thing checked off here. Here's another plate that uh, I'm going to be replacing. This is the original serial number plate that was on this lathe. And again, unfortunately, in the process of getting it taken off, uh, it cracked and broke. Uh, these old cast aluminum tags are kind of brittle and Sometimes it's really hard to get those drive screws out. So we're gonna be replacing it with a brand new one. And again, this one was uh, custom made for me by Tom Utley over at Vaughn Industrial, who does this as a gig. I mean, he makes a reproduction tags for folks. So again, I sent him the original one. Uh, he was able to digitize all the artwork on there and uh, put it in his laser uh, and to etch that out uh, and Beautiful, beautiful reproduction tag, pretty much identical to the original one. Uh, and we're going to go install this. I've already got my four holes in there. We'll be using uh, drive screws to put these on. Uh, these are what the little drive screws look like. That's what was originally used. They didn't use screws on these, um, which makes it more difficult to take them off, which can be good and bad. You know, you don't have to worry about someone stealing your tags, but doing restoration work, it can be difficult to get off. So we're going to drill a hole and basically these just kind of press down in there. Uh, that sh should just clear that hole, but then we'll drill a little bit smaller hole on the inside that it'll press down these sides and hold it in place. So let's go do that real quick. Serial number tag kind of goes down in this area here. We, the original holes were covered up. I'm, I just, I'm, because I didn't, wasn't sure I was going to be able to line up the, the holes exactly to the old plate. We just filled in the holes with Bondo and we're basically going to be putting new holes in here. So what I'm going to do is we'll just kind of get us a hole started there. And this is a a little bit smaller diameter than that drive screw, so it'll kind of press in there and hold it in place. Probably deep enough. I'm gonna get a drive screw here, and we will go ahead and install this one. So I'll take a hammer now, we'll just kind of pop that in place. Now what I'm going to do, let's see, see what kind of holds it there, looks straight to me, and I'm going to take a transfer punch, this is a 1 8 inch hand transfer punch, which is the size of that hole, and I'm going to put a little uh, center punch mark right in the center of that, that'll help my drill bit get centered up on that hole, because it is a little bit smaller diameter than what we're drilling there. Grab my next drive screw here and install that one. All right, now we'll do the same thing on the bottom two. 
our transfer punch in there to get a center. I'm just going to take a punch and I'm just going to drive these home real good. and our serial number tag is installed. So here are some panels that go on that bottom part of the belay. These were removable so you can get to access points behind it. And uh, these need to be cleaned up, painted, and reinstalled. So what I wanna do is go ahead and get, we got these little decorative pieces on here. I'm gonna pull those off first. Let's see, I think this screwdriver here will be the best one to fit that. Let me. Let me get these pulled off and then we're going to get the paint stripped off of these and get them repainted. So I want to make sure I don't strip that out. All right, so now we can pull this little cover off and it does have uh, an opening in there basically where air can get in. So that's what these do is they just cover those openings up. And uh, these are just cast aluminum. Look like they've been polished a little bit. We'll get all these pulled off and get these knobs pulled off and we can go get these stripped down and start worrying about painting them. Let me get these off. So on this I have these two little knobs that kind of connect to this little cam piece in the back and that's how you tighten that up. These are held in place with a uh, tapered pin, kind of back on the back side of this knob. And I need to drive those out. So just got a punch here. I'm trying to find the smaller end. That looks like the smaller end. Let's see if that'll punch on out of there. Yeah, there it goes. There it knocked out. And now, you should pull apart like such, and that pin, we'll go ahead and drop that pin because that pin matches this set, and it'll be ready to go back together. All right, I went after these with a uh, wire wheel on an angle grinder. I stripped off the paint, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm just gonna hit it with a little primer first. I'll kind of get me look and see what it's going to look like and I can decide if I need to put any filler in any of these. We'll probably let this stuff uh, dry and uh, make a decision on that. But we'll just go ahead and let that uh, go for a little bit. So it's about lunchtime. I think I'm going to go have some lunch while the bank tries and uh, we'll See about painting these after a while. I think that's good. And right, I went ahead and hit this with a coat of uh, the finished paint as well. So we are ready to go ahead and kind of put these back together. And I did kind of take these um, little aluminum pieces here over to the angle or the grinder with the wire wheel and just kind of cleaned them up a little bit. That's about all we did to them, uh, but they look a little bit better. Take our little screwdriver and put these back together the way they were. All right, that one's down. Okay, got that part knocked out. Now we need to get our uh, knobs put back on. All right, let's get this handle put back in. I'm gonna start by Putting this one in. All right, and then we have our piece on the back here that'll slide up on there. This is a little bit of a tight fit. I might need to, hmm. I might need to get something to kind of squeeze those together. Got a little, um, 
F clamp here. And we'll ease that down over that. And that should hopefully try to get those holes kind of lined up. Here we go. Yeah, it should just kind of pull that down over there. Appears to be working just fine. I'm looking down the hole, trying to get the two holes to line up. I think we got it about right there. All right, we got our pin started here. And that is driven home. Now I'll do the other one. Um, so I need to get that pin out and we'll get this one installed over here. Same process. There are two pins down here in the bottom that line up right there. This pushes in place. And we just turn these cam locks and our door is installed. Now this one over here is actually screwed in with some cap screws. Let me uh, get that ready to go and we'll put this panel in place as well. All right, this panel is ready to go back on. And like I said, we have some socket cap screws that are gonna hold it in place. So I'll get those going here. And I'd say that looks pretty good if I don't say so myself. Making progress. Next thing I wanna do is these are the uh, little flanges that go on those sight glasses that we took off earlier. And I just kind of want to polish these up. These are aluminum and they're kind of scratched up and tarnished. So I'm just going to use some sandpaper on a little sanding disc and we're going to kind of go through some grits and see if we can't polish these up. I'm starting with some uh, 180 grit and this is just on a drill. And I'm just going to kind of do it until I get a, you know, all the little dings out of it. A little bit more. I'm going to go to a 220 grit. Most of the uh, cutting was done on the last, but I'm just kind of trying to get those scratch marks out. And now I'm going to go to a 320 grit. There we go. And that looks really nice. So I'm going to do that to all of them and just kind of freshen these things up. Just a quick kind of before and after shot here of what these are looking like. So this is what we're kind of starting with and this is what we're going to. I'm going to get these other ones knocked out and we'll have that little step done. Looking at the sight glasses, I need to clean these up. Um, I've actually got some new plastic glasses ordered, but they're not exactly like the originals. I'm going to have to do some modifications to them uh, to make them work. I want to see if I can get these to clean up though. Uh, some of these are actually kind of scratched and pitted on the outside, but I think I might try using some sandpaper, using some really fine sandpaper, see if I can polish these things down and get them clear and get the backsides cleaned up. Right now I've got some pretty bad oil stains on there. So I'm going to take these over and first try to clean the oil up off of them. And then I'm going to see if I can sand down these outside glass surfaces and get them where you can see through them. If not, we'll use the other ones when they come in and do some modifications, but I'd, I'd like to keep the original ones if I can. Let's see what we can do. All right, well, I got a, most of the oil stains out, but now I got this stuff going on the surface. So again, I got this 360 or whatever, 380 paper, and I'm just gonna see if I can kind of just knock that down. And I think we got all the scratches out of it. And it's not crystal clear, but I'm hoping I can go through some more grits and, and maybe get back there on a buffing wheel and polish it out. So I'm gonna do the rest of these and uh, see, if we can, see if we can make this work. This is some 600 grit over on my surface plate again, just kind of lapping this and uh, taking it down to a finer grit. And then I'm gonna try, this is 1500 grit. Idea here is, is to make these little scratches 
smaller and smaller and smaller until hopefully we can make this clear. So that's looking good. I think what I'm going to do next is go to, I've got some, um, I've got a buffing wheel back there uh, with some like rouge on it that will maybe see if that'll polish that out. I'm going to go try it and see. So I'm back at my wood lathe and I've actually got this little buffing wheel that I actually use on wood turnings to kind of polish my wood up. I uh, used to use this for bowl turning a lot. And it's just a, um, a polishing wheel that has some uh, a Tripoli rouge on it. So this is just to kind of polish things out. I'm gonna spin up the lathe and we're just gonna very carefully take this little piece and kind of go around and polish this off. And I'm hoping that's going to take the last of those scratches out and put a nice finish on there and make it where this glass will be uh, visible again. I got two of them polished out and that glass is nice and clear. I'm very happy with that. Uh, this will just kind of pop in there like such and uh, Two down and uh, two more to go. I'm gonna get these polished out, but I think uh, I think we're gonna be able to salvage them. I didn't think we were going to, but I think it's gonna work out. So let me finish these up and see how they look. Well, it has been a couple of weeks actually since I've been able to work on the, the lathe. Uh, between being on the road traveling, uh, having some different things going on, some just family things, whatever, literally haven't had a day in the shop in about three weeks now. Uh, but since I've been in here last, I finally got these new backer pieces that were sent in by uh, Tom Utley over at Vaughn Industrial. He actually had a, another one of his customers reach out to him wanting to make some new backer pieces to go on these sight glasses. This is kind of the old original ones. Of course, they have the cork gaskets on them there, but that's the little disc. And he, he using his uh, uh, little laser engraver that he has, uh, he was able to to make some brand new ones for us. And he also, while he was at it, had um, they cut out some new gaskets to go with these as well. So basically the way this will work is, is there'll be a uh, gasket on the front of this little disc. There's a gasket on the back of the disc, kind of like such. And then that all sandwiches in behind this and you can see the backing in that little glass and that shows you your oil level. So that is what we got. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get these installed over on the machine. And anyway, I'm, I'm excited to get this done finally. So let's get over and get that knocked out. All right, let's see if we can do this. So we're gonna start, I've got my screws here. Again, the little plastic piece we had cleaned up previously, these just kind of press in place. I'll go ahead and put, make sure that's in there nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and put these little screws in and then we'll start assembling this. Whoops. My lens fell out, but we got it back now. So let's go ahead and we'll, uh, these little holes could be just a little bit bigger. But we will make them work, I do believe. All right, so we got the first gasket on and then the disc will go in. I wanna make sure I've got this oriented right where I got the hole in the top and the bottom and we'll go across the bottom two disc holes here. And yeah, that's gonna fit on there. That's just right on that hole. And then we will put the second gasket on. I will mention that uh, Tom Utley over at Vaughn Industrial, again, the guy that made these little discs, um, he, I think, made up some extras. And if anybody is looking for a set of these uh, for a Monarch lathe, um, you can contact him. And I imagine that he's going to try to keep some of these in stock uh, because it is something a lot of people want to have when they're restoring one of these lays to be able to put those in, get this good and tight. 
the gaskets should keep the oil from coming out. And that looks awesome. All right, one down, uh, three more to go. One, two, three, yes. So as most of you guys know, Saturday is kind of my main shop day. I have a, have a job outside of working in the shop. So, you know, during the week, I'm usually busy with my job. So I'm not able to, you know, maybe in the evenings or something slip out here. But Saturday has always kind of been my, my day that I spend in the shop. And the last couple of weeks just have not been able to take advantage of my Saturdays in the shop. Um, three weeks ago, I went out to Waco, Texas for the weekend, uh, actually a long weekend. My wife went with me, but there was a family out there that, that has a bunch of antique tractors. And every year they do a big show where they crank up all the old antique tractors. So when I say antique, these are some really, really, really old um, tractors from the early 1900s kind of first generation stuff, some pretty rare pieces. And uh, I was fortunate enough, they, they asked me if I would like to come out to their, their show and I did and I got to go out and, and spend the weekend out there uh, with that and actually got to work on a, what was I think a 1916 case 2040, if I remember right, which is kind of a prairie tractor. And um, basically they had me running it all day long and we got to do some plowing with it and some other stuff so it's really a lot of fun um, right up my alley of what the kind of stuff i like to do so really appreciate the invite and the opportunity to get to go out and do that Let's see if we can get this one going here jt bice is who kind of invited me out there his dad uh lou bice is the one who has the this incredible collection of tractors and Every year their family does that show. And it's kind of a private uh, event. They invite folks to come out. We had several hundred people there, though. Uh, it was really, really a lot of fun. I really appreciate the opportunity to get to go out and do that. Uh, last Saturday, which again, normal shop day, normally a shop day, we had an event going on at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. And I was out there all day long. Basically, we run the steam-powered sawmill. So I spent most of last Saturday out at the museum on the sawmill, which is also always a lot of fun. So while I had an awesome time the last uh, couple of weekends doing this stuff, I was, you know, kind of anxious to get back out in the shop this Saturday because I literally have not done anything in the shop in almost three weeks. And Got up Saturday morning, and actually I got up very early Saturday morning, not by design, but because I was having some pain and uh, didn't really think a whole lot about it. Kind of went on, started, came out here and started doing some stuff, and pain was getting worse and worse. Um, didn't take me long to figure out what was going on. I was having a kidney stone, so ended up... This Saturday, during my normal shop time, I spent about six hours in the ER um, trying to get some pain meds and stuff where I could pass a kidney stone. If you never had a kidney stone, uh, I don't recommend it. Try to avoid them at all costs. This is the first one I've ever had, and it was not any fun. Um, by the end of the Last night, they sent me home, basically had me all doped up on stuff. Um, I think that my kidney stone has passed through my kidney. It's now in my bladder, uh, which, you know, is kind of the worst part of it from what I've been told is, you know, going through the kidneys, kind of the worst part of the whole experience. Uh, still got to pass it the rest of the way, um, though, so I'm can't say that I'm looking forward to that, but at least today I'm not about to die. Yesterday, oh my word, I felt like I was about to die. So three Saturdays in a row of not any shop time, and I did slip out here. This is Sunday afternoon when I'm filming this, and um, I feel okay today, but I'm, I'm still got some of the pain meds in me, and I just, I'm not going to try to operate any machinery or anything like that. I figured I could do this without hurting anything. 
uh, but I'm not doing anything besides this. So that's my fun that I've had the last couple of weeks. Hopefully uh, we can get this kidney stone to finish passing and I can get back to normal and get some stuff done out here. We got lots of work to do in the shop. Just need time. All right, there's three more. I got one more to put on here. I'll do that one off camera and uh, we'll bring you guys back and show you the finished results. And there we go. Our new oil sight glasses are all installed and um, this lathe is looking awesome in my opinion. I'm real happy with it. But I'm real happy with how everything looks right now uh, and really excited to be start seeing this lathe kind of going back together. Up next, I need to get fluids put back in it, get the oils put back in here, and then I'm gonna get all my electronics hooked back up that we were working on previously. And we didn't have it quite all worked out, but we were getting really close. But now that I've kind of got this where we can get everything hooked back up, we can hopefully get that finished up as well. And then uh, once that's done, the next step is just finish getting the rest of the machine parts cleaned up, repainted, put back on any repairs or whatever that needs to happen. And hopefully the lathe will be back in operation. So still got a lot of work to do, but uh, we are definitely making good progress. Well, there we go. She's coming along slowly, but surely. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll actually get to use this machine for real. So I'm excited about how it's coming, coming along. And like I said, I'm excited too, that I can hopefully get the electronics back on here where we can finish nailing all that stuff down and kind of get all that worked out as well. So with that guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted to the site. Uh, and as always, a big huge thank you to both the subscribers of the channel as well as those who support the channel financially through PayPal, uh, Patreon, etc. Really makes a big difference. Uh, getting those little contributions in and allowing me to take the time to shoot these videos, edit them and get them put out there for you guys to enjoy. So with that, we're going to sign off again, as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.